guys hey guys what's up it's me Priscilla and I have a completed sketchbook tour for you now I did do this sketchbook tour at the beginning for mermaid showing all my mermaid sketches but now I have it completely finished so I will just go and flip through the mermaid sketches if you'd like to see the mermaid sketches and hear about them more in depth, I'll go ahead and I'll tag that down below so you can see that video. But I'm gonna just go ahead and flip through so you can see. Here were the two mermaid prompts that I was following. I started this off with Ariel. There's my rose mermaid. I forgot what that one was for. <laughs> I love this one. Uh, this was just like a sketch because I sketch a lot in church but it was on the back of two of these. This is my husband as a Sith Lord for our May the 4th anniversary. And then I made it May the 4th Mermaid. And this was like some kind of like dark creature of the lagoon. I said that I, I did not like this one at all. Not a fan of it. And I really didn't like this. I like the concept of it for like dragon fruit, but I didn't really like how this turned out, but I liked her hair and her tail. I love the one, I love this one. This one turned out awesome. And this was for Mother's Day. And I do love this one, I think it's gorgeous. Love this one too, it created a really cool evil mermaid. This one's super cute and it's shiny too. Look at it, I used that glittery little pen to make the bubbles. It's shiny, okay. This one's a little bit sad and scary. I love this one, that one was cute. I didn't really like this one. And then, I mean, this one was cute, but whatever. <laughs> it's a failed attempt, and then I love, loved how this one turned out. Come on, keep going. This was a doodle. Oh, I cut one out because I made this one girl that I follow on TikTok into a mermaid for her birthday. I really love this one. It turned out so good. <laughs> Here's another church doodle. So I thought it'd be fun to kind of draw myself as a 12 year old. It was a really awkward stage in my life, but I went ahead and I drew myself <laughs> as a little 12 year old. And these are the, literally, these are the kind of shirts that I wore. SpongeBob, a paw print, and then a gecko shirt. So yes, horse mouth, because I did have like about, I'm not even joking. I had a horse mouth as a sixth grader because I got eight teeth taken out of my entire face when I was younger. So here, I'll zoom in so you can see it a little so, bit more. Yeah, see how I, uh, those were the teeth. It was the two teeth around the, the four front teeth that were in my face. <laughs> yeah, the teeth surrounding it got taken out because I was like really delayed in getting my orthodontic stuff done. So that was the whole thing there. And then, oh, here's me with my, my CD player as a 12 year old too. Typical. <laughs> And then I, I said this was like Miss Rizzo. So all these little dog doodles are from church. So I've got like Shelby, a Snauzer, a little Corgi, a Chihuahua. And this was supposed to be like, this is a Husky. And then I would think I was just trying to make this like a German Shepherd. And then I have like a cute little boxer. And then Steven drew this in church. <laughs> Cause he says pants are too tight. <laughs> so I thought it was funny and I drew that. It's okay, we're allowed to do these things, we're married. <laughs> the Marie Antoinette kind of mermaid. Jasmine mermaid. This was like a wedding mermaid kind of theme. More doodles from church. And I just take like pens or pencils and I just draw on the back of the pages because I don't like not filling up the entire thing. But then again, so I don't like um, drawing on the back of pages of designs. So I don't like drawing on the back because, you know, I don't want to ruin what's on the front. So that's the reason why I do that. And then I've got this ginormo mermaid that I made for like the last day, like mermaids forever. So here she is. I think I had, I even have like a fun little um, video on this. And then this was, I did this for a live stream. It was like the last day of mermaid. And then I did this for a live stream and I do have live streams on here on Thursdays at four o'clock Eastern Standard Time if any of you are interested. So here is Loki. This was for a live stream. This was also for a live stream. And this was with the Tombow markers because you can see 
I tried to do the watercolor technique with it and I do not like Tombow markers. This was another live stream with Sento's. Sento's markers, I don't believe. You see, I kind of listed it. Strawberries, oranges, lemons, boogers. <laughs> Blueberries, grape soda. Let's see if this is still smells. Yeah, so <laughs> it's a little awkward because it smelled beast pants, but yeah, they still smell. And what I did for this beast was um, with my live stream, I opened up like these fun little, you know, the adorable surprise packages. And then I draw whatever character I get. So here's beast that the reason why I drew beast here. And then here's Anastasia. And then I started to do like a fun TikTok series where I started to draw all the Cinderella's, like the retellings of our from our time. And I did like some of my favorite Cinderella retellings and then some of like my TikTok followers, like favorite Cinderella's. I made a tribute for them. So this is Drew Barrymore from Ever After. One of my all time favorite Cinderella retellings. I mean, I watch this all the time. It was like a VHS tape that was always in my travel, like little basket of VHS tapes every time we went on a trip somewhere. Here's Julia, and I actually made this after I made the Ella Pesto, I forgot what it was called, <laughs> but the pesto pasta from the Luca movie that her dad makes. I did make it and then I drew Julia after. And I was just like, I just have to draw Julia. And then I drew Brandy Cinderella. And I really, I love her Cinderella dress was amazing. I love the sparkles. I can't recreate that, but I tried with my, with my white Posca pen. And then I drew Hilary Duff as the Cinderella, like a, a Cinderella story. So here she is like, because it was all about her phone. I drew Selena Gomez from another Cinderella story. And no, I did not draw Lucy Hale because no offense, just didn't like that whole retelling. It just felt too close to Selena's story. And I was just like, eh, and I don't really like Lucy Hale. So no offense if you like her. And I am very, very proud of this one. This one is my, my all time favorite one of all the Cinderella's I've ever drawn. This is the best Lily James Cinderella drawing that I have done in forever. So I'm very proud on how this one turned out. And then this is from Into the Woods and I drew Anna Kendrick and I think I tried to like make her skin darker because it's supposed to be nighttime and the candlelight's supposed to be around, but I think I made her too dark and honestly her eyes are too close. So I love how I drew her dress and her shoes, but I don't like how I drew her face. That was like the only thing I didn't like is that her eyes are way too close to each other. They should be a little bit more distance from each other. And I made her too dark. And then I drew like, the two first Rodgers and Hammerstein versions of, you know, Cinderella the musical on, you know, like an actual filmed production. So Julia Andrews was first and she was in 1957. And then it's Leslie Ann Warren. Yes, Leslie Ann Warren. I keep saying Leslie Ann Wallen because I used to have a Mrs. Wallen teacher. So it's really difficult for me. So this is Leslie Ann Warren. And this is the Cinderella my mom grew up watching. So this is another Rogers and Hammerstein. I think it was like 1960 something. So they did another filmed production with her. And this is the one my mom grew up watching. Can't forget Anne Hathaway from Ella Enchanted for the Cinderella retelling. Love this movie so much. It's I grew up watching this one too. Just love it. And then, of course, you can't do a Cinderella series without an original cartoon Cindy from Disney. I'm really very proud about this one, too. Very, very, very proud about this one. It turned out really great. And then I decided to do two book retellings, like my favorite Cinderella retellings. So Marissa Meyer, you guys have probably have read this before. Marissa Meyer, The Lunar Chronicles, Cinder. So this is Cinder, she is a cyborg Cinderella. And it's a really awesome series. If you're bored and you want a good book series, make sure you read The Lunar Chronicles. I am 
dying and waiting for these these books to be turned into a movie series. They deserve a movie series. And then this one was um, Julie Murphy's retelling, and you see I got on the back. Ugh, I hate that. See, this is why I don't draw on the back, because this stuff happens right there. And it makes me so mad, and that's why I don't draw on the back. But uh, Julie Murphy, who wrote Dumplin', the Netflix movie, maybe some of you have seen it. She wrote a really awesome body positivity uh, retelling of Cinderella called If the Shoe Fits. It's new, it's wonderful, it made me really happy because it's super positive because it's the first Cinderella book I have read. It's got like a bachelor setting and everything. Oh, it's so good. But yes. This <laughs> this dress is supposed to be Dolce Gabbana. They didn't really they didn't really like describe it too much in the book, but it's supposed to be Dolce Gabbana, and I was just like, hmm, a light blue Dolce Gabbana. This is what I think it would look like. <laughs> So I had a few pages left in my sketchbook and I decided that since I drew all the Cinderella's I was going to draw all the fairy godmothers as well just to finish up the sketchbook. So we started with Helena Bowman as the fairy godmother. Helena Bowman Carter, right? Helena Carter, no, Helena Bowman Carter. <laughs> Which I absolutely love this amazing dress. I actually have a friend, uh, she got a dress commissioned for the fairy godmother and we actually her name sparkle with Steph she, we actually before my wedding she came to my wedding and we dressed up as Cinderella in my wedding dress and she dressed up as a fairy godmother because my dress no joke when everybody asked me what does your dress look like I kid you not it looked exactly like Hilary Duff's. That's why this one's so special to me, is because my wedding dress looked like Hilary Duff's dress. And then we have the fairy godmother, and I channeled the actual face character, like the new uh, fairy godmother face character outfit. That's what I channeled with this. I tried to make it look like two blues, but I go crazy with my blues and purples, and I just went nuts. Really, really proud about the background, how it's light right here and then dark on this side and then the swirls. Oh, I am very happy with this background on this fairy godmother. And you can't do a fairy godmother without the legendary, iconic Whitney Houston. Oh, she's just flawless. Like, I was on TikTok and I saw how Whitney Houston and Brandy were recording Impossible. Oh my gosh. They just. There was no altering to their voices needed. I mean, they're just, they were both flawless. And goodness, I miss Whitney so much. And I had so much fun. Because I know she has like this sheer kind of like cape thing that's attached to her fingers. And it's like, this is part of the cape right here that goes behind her hair. But I had so much fun coloring this in. Way too much fun. <laughs> And you can't have a fairy godmother without Shrek 2 fairy godmother. I need a hero. <laughs> I love, I love this fairy godmother. I don't care if she's evil. She is just amazing. Because honestly, she was just trying to help out her son. And I would have done the exact same thing. If I had a kid and I wanted my son to marry a princess, I'd probably try to sabotage the marriage too. <laughs> I don't want to, but I feel like that kind of evilness would come over me. <laughs> and then um, the blue fairy. A lot of my TikTok people suggested the blue fairy um, because, you know, Pinocchio needed a fairy godmother and technically she is a fairy godmother. I don't like her face. I don't like it. And you can even see it kind of just like, it looks weird because I was trying to draw in my style while looking at some concept art from Pinocchio and that's what I was trying to channel but I just don't like it. It's kind of like with um, Anna Kendrick. I think her eyes are spaced okay but her mouth to me just seems too low on her face. Uh, let's see if I can like give you a closer up look of it. So you see it kind of is okay, kind of not. I, I just think it's like there's too much distance going on with the mouth too close to the bottom and too far away from like, like it just seems disproportionate in a lot of ways. But I do love how I did her dress and the sleeves and her wings especially. And you see, I 
this is if I want to do a two page spread I do like leave a lot of space so what I did is I went in and I filled up the two last pages with uh, Sleeping Beauty's fairy godmothers and technically they are fairy godmothers I mean they swooped on him when she was born and gave her awesome gifts and I mean that's what I wish my godmother would have given me <laughs> it's like can't you give me beauty <laughs> I mean no Maleficent walking in even though that is probably one of my aunts no I'm kidding <laughs> so we got Fauna, Flora, and Meriwether and I really like how this one turned out this was a good way to like end the sketchbook because that is the end and once again, I don't really like fill up anything. Oh, so you see, here's my list. I like wrote list and everything. So here's who I wanted to draw for Cinderella. And then here is all the fairy godmothers. And then I know Camila, Camila Cabello. I don't know if I'm not saying that right, but I know she has a Cinderella movie coming out in uh, September. And I wanted to hold off because I like to do that. I like to watch the movies first to even decide if I even like it before I waste time making art on it. So <laughs> I know it's terrible, but yeah. So this sketchbook was started at the end of April and it lasted me to August. So May, <laughs> June, July, August. So a four month sketchbook. It's not terrible at all. And I already went ahead and bought a new sketchbook. This is an Illo sketchbook right here. And all the illustrations were made with my wonderful Oh hoo hoo markers! And I actually have the Oh hoo hoo liners now too. So those were the main things for the sketchbook. And now I have moved on to a Stillman and Burn Zeta series. And it's got like really thick pages. This is watercolor. You see, very thick pages to handle watercolor. And marker, it does bleed through to the other side so far. But as you see right here. But I mean, it's just typical. It's just like, it's just like my Illo sketchbook. But yes, guys, thanks so much for dropping by. And hopefully the next sketchbook tour we do is maybe like filling up this sketchbook and hopefully my October Inktober sketchbook. But yeah, I'll see you guys later. Thanks for watching. Bye.